This video is brought to you by the EA Creator Network. Thanks to those guys, I'm able to jump into this capture event and get the content out to you guys. Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome to the first rebuild of FIFA 22, and it had to be a special one. And by special one, I mean extremely special. We are going to be rebuilding the oldest club in the world, Sheffield. Not Sheffield United, Sheffield FC. This club was established or founded in 1857. That's over 150 years ago, bro. Oh, that's old. That is incredible. The way we can do this is obviously this team is currently non-league division one in real life. We are going to be putting them into the EFL League 2. We're going to be choosing a Hartlepool as the team to replace. Our rivals are going to be Salford. Yes, we have decided that uh, with the chat together. And these are the kits. We have customized them to look as similar to how their kits look in real life for this 2021-2022 season. And we have also created a crest that looks as similar as possible to their crest. And of course, we have renamed, renamed the stadium and also changed the looks of it. As you guys can see right here, we have worked on all of that to make sure it is as close to the real thing as possible. You don't even need mods anymore. You can just go ahead and create it on console, which is a thing that we were not able to do in the past. It's great that we have this feature now. Create a club. It begins now. The club itself, the squad, is going to be a one-star squad, basically the low end in uh, League 2. And the budget is going to be 1 million. We're not going to touch that. It's not going to be more than that. Football giant, that is way too much. Obviously, we're just starting. So we're going to go on custom here. Domestic success. We're not expecting much from ourselves. We are the oldest club in world football, but we need to be financially stable. But success is nothing we need to think about right now. Brand exposure is going to be quite important as well. If we can do that and grow the club, that's going to be good. So medium on that one. And youth development is going to be quite important to us. The youth academy is going to be used a lot, I would say. But I, I don't want to put it on high because it can be a little bit of a detriment uh, later on into the seasons. So we're going to have it set up like that. And it begins now. The Sheffield FC career mode. If you guys are hyped about it, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you are new. And let's get right into this rebuild. Let's rebuild the oldest club in football to be the best in world football. Let's do it. Go on then. Put up the shirt, son. By the way, if you guys enjoy rebuilds, make sure to sub, boys, because this is going to be a massive year for us on YouTube. And you should be here from day one. Preseason tournament could give us more money than what we actually have at the moment. I'm going to choose the worst teams possible to maybe stand a chance in that tournament. And the team was obviously set up as balanced. So we're going to have old and young players in the team. But most importantly, we need to start off with the Youth Academy. Do we have any super talents in here? No. We have a right back who is 54 rated. But as you guys know, we have a little trick to get these guys upgraded very fast. 54 rated for now. But I do feel like we could get this guy upgraded very, very quickly. So we're going to train him to become a left back. He's only 15 as well. So by the time he's 16, he might be above 60. And then he'll be usable for us. Uh, Ferraro. He is a good dribbler here. And then Shimichak and all these guys. I mean, I guess this guy's better for a uh, wing position. I would say Zupan looks quite good for the wing. So we're going to try and make him a winger if possible. So let's move him over to the right wing position. That should get him upgraded in his stats. But initially looking at these, there's only one really, really good looking talent. And we're going to be focusing on him. What kind of scout do they give us for this rebuild? Come on, be a good one. Ha, <laughs> one star, one star. All right, well, that's not going to help us a lot. Uh, transfer budget at one mil. And here is the team. We are looking at Wall up top at striker, 26 years old. Holden, 24 years old. Okay, not too old. Parsons, 28 years old, 63 rated. Wall is not the highest rated one, is it? Who's the highest rated one? Lee's here, 69 rated. 26 years old. We can work with that. Steel is looking quite all right. 27. Lamb, 26. Morris, 29. It is very well balanced. I like it. It's a good mixture of old and young. Mikos, the captain, is 33 years old. And then Parks here is 30 himself. And a bunch of younger players here on the bench. We'll look through potentials. If they have any, that would be great. Okay, so... 
we have been done absolutely dirty by EA. Uh, so if you create a club, from what I can tell, half of your team's contract is expiring. Uh, so if you guys are going to be doing a create a club career mode, please make sure to extend your player's contract immediately when the season begins, unless you want to sell them. And even if you do want to sell them, it's going to give you more money. But this is a bit of an LEA. I'm not happy with this. First time in looking into the free agents in FIFA 22. There could be some good ones in here. We have no idea. So for the first time, we have to do it for this video because we obviously don't have much money. We're going to be um, quite, you know, regular in the free agents every single season at the beginning it's going to be quite huge for us to look into this so let's start it off for those people wondering fifa 22 free agents 16 years old to 20 28 years old we're checking right now and you basically have this this is it this is all you have just a couple i think in previous years we had um way more way more so this is very interesting to see we have a couple, though, that we have found that we might be interested in. So we have Ferreira, Lang, both centre-backs. And then we also have Marin here from Romania, uh, who's only 22 years old. And it's looking quite balanced. So could be a very good centre midfielder for our team. Uh, immediately, I'm going to go in for Marin, hoping that we can sign him for a decent amount immediately for the first season. Oh, wow. Okay, so apparently the lad that we just signed played for the Romanian national team and was the captain for the Romanian Olympic team. He comes in with a 64 rating. Hey, let's go, buddy. 63 physicality, 60 defending, 64 dribbling, 65 passing, 73 pace. This guy's very well-rounded. Happy with that signing. That is a banging first signing, boys. So if you guys are going to be doing Road to Glories, this is probably a go-to guy for every single person playing FIFA 22. And looking into free agents in the first season, unless they rotate them. I'd be surprised if there is new free agents every year. That'd be cool, though. On top of the addition of Marin into the team, we have just signed Adam Lang, 68-rated centre-back that we have just found from Hungary. And he's going to be going into the starting lineup for the 29-year-old Morris. The 28-year-old Lang is going to be replacing him, taking his position on the right-hand side. And... Uh, yeah, coming in with really good physical stats, decent defending, not a lot of pace, uh, but it's pretty much the same on both of the center backs that we have right now. Uh, one of them is 27, one of them is 28. Good age, good experience in the squad now. And we are also looking to sell players, so hopefully soon enough we will get rid of some. So Wojtovic, we're not going to change his position though, obviously. Zupan though, we're going to change. 49 to 56. There we go. See that? See that, lads? And now we train him to become a left wing. And that way, we're going to get him up even more. Now he's actually becoming a viable option for the future. Scout, scout, scout. Do we have a new one? Come on, three star, three star at least. There we go. Four star, three star. Okay. I'm going to go for him. I'm going to go for Christian Blundal. Some would say certain Icelandic men are good at finding young players. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Oh my god. Anyways, this joke is getting too out of hand. Iceland. I absolutely love Iceland. I was there just now, so this is perfect. Um, for the sake of my Iceland holiday, we're going to be signing Christian Blundal as the, as the scout for us. And we're going to send him to England because we are the oldest club. Actually, you know what? There was an idea in my chat that said, since we are going with the old theme... How about we go for the first and oldest World Cup winner for our first scouting session? And you know what? I agree with him. We're going to go for three months in Uruguay. Let's start it off that way. Now we are left with 800k and 16k in the wage budget. We're going to quickly adjust that a little bit. Bring that down to around 10k because I don't think we're going to need more. So 1 million in the budget. The players that we have sold, let me show you right now who has left the club. We have obviously only been selling. So you can look at parks here. Uh, coming, going over to Puebla for 710k. That was our biggest transfer. Herb has left the team. Scott has left the team. Moody has gone out on loan, on a loan to buy. He's like 47 rated. Lang has come in on a free and Marin. And uh, those are the only transfers so far in this window. Still 1 million to spend. So possibly should be looking into one very talented but very low rated player that we can maybe bring into the team. 
hopefully we can find one. So guys, we have just signed a new player for 1.1 mil, even though he's worth 1.3 mil. It's Fofana. Yes, the lad that plays in Norway is going to be joining us. He comes in from Molde, 64 rated striker from the Ivory Coast, and he's going to be replacing Holden, the younger striker in our team. He's going to be taking over that position immediately. Oddly enough, after having signed him, the deal hasn't gone through yet. I am, it, I, am in, I am in September. I am in September. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. I thought I was actually in August. Oh boy, big mistakes were made. I didn't realize that we were not in a transfer window. Okay, so we're only going to be getting him later on. Cool. Oh well, it is what it is. <laughs> I messed up, but it's okay. I couldn't couldn't be a me video without me actually messing up. <laughs> so this time we're going to be sending the scout to England after we're done with Uruguay. Not too many talents found, sadly, just a couple. I can show you guys right now what we have available to us after scouting. Um, we did have these guys already. They were here already when the game started. We have joined in with Campos, Iglesias and Acuna, all very low rated but we are trying to change positions to see if they are actually higher rated. So we'll see how that goes. January 2022, halfway through our first season with Sheffield FC. And look at that. Honestly, I did not expect to see us here. 47 points on Sheffield. Are they going to be fighting for League One? Personally, I would have kind of preferred to not go up in the first season because I would have liked a second season in which the team actually gets to absolutely smash everyone. Right now, we are doing all right to get into that first position. Really well done by the team. And uh, looking at the squad itself it, uh, at the moment, we can see that we have Wade reaching the 70 rating. Lee and Lang are getting close to it as well. And uh, Lam on the left-hand side as well. So we have a couple of players doing all right in that sense. And now Fafana has joined. He has gone up to a 65 rating. Fafana is going to take over, which means... The other striker that we have in our team who has... Let's see how he has done so far. Wade has 12 and 5. Wow, he's having an amazing season. He's only 24, so dynamic potential could kick in for him. Uh, Wall is doing all right, 9 and 2. And then the other striker, Holden, only had 5 goals with 1 assist. So he's going to go onto the transfer list right now. And Fofana is going to take over that position immediately. Uh, for Holden himself, we will maybe be able to get around maybe 600, 700,000. Fofana now worth 1.6. We paid 1.1 for him. So it's looking quite good in that sense. Any players loaned out that are actually worth anything? No. All very low rated. It's fine though. We need to let go of at least one player. Otherwise, we're going to have issues with the budget. Currently only 8k in the wage budget. That's nothing. Holden, there we go. There's the deal. 610k. That's going to be saving us for the rest of the season. That was a necessary deal to go through. Finally, it has happened. Morris, the center back on the bench now is the center back on the transfer list. 620k accepted for him. That should put us up towards 1 million. 1 million! The final scout report in England is given out. Let's go! Absolutely massive. Get in! All right, England, I see you. Sheffield FC, oldest club in the world, now has found themselves two. Two really, really good looking talents here. Clifford with really good shooting. He is probably a striker. Let's move him over to the striker position. Only 15 years old, could take over next season from Wall, who is already like 29, I believe. I'm not too sure, actually. 26, 27, actually. Clifford, striker, come on, come on, come on. Bang! 63. Okay. End of season one. And we're ending it on two wins in May. And we're ending it as the first place team in League Two. Congratulations to our team for pulling this off. I didn't really expect this to happen in this first season. I genuinely thought we'd be somewhere in there in the down part of this. But Salford City, for example, who were a one and a half star team, uh, are behind us while we were coming in as a one-star team. So we definitely have improved a lot. The development plans have kicked in nicely. Uh, for growth specifically, you can see here a couple of really, really high pluses. So plus fours, plus threes, plus five here for Adams as well as a backup player coming into our squad. Uh, plus 10 for Ferraro coming in from the Youth Academy can be a good option for us in the future. So we're looking good, boys. The right back, Wojtovic from the Youth Academy as well, plus seven. So generally, we have done a great job. 
and we have gained promotion into League One. Now, Wall, 24 goals, 4 assists. Wade, 21 and 10. Incredible. I'm surprised that he doesn't have an average rating above 7. Uh, Parsons has done well down the right-hand side. Fofana just came in, 6.9 average rating. I like that in 22 games. That's good. And uh, yeah, overall, good season for the lads. Sheffield FC is going to go up into League One. Let's see how we do over there. I'm excited about it. One last gap report coming in for the season. We are looking at nothing special, which is fine because we already have a bunch of good talent in the Youth Academy, and I'm looking forward to use them down the line. Let me just quickly show you guys one last time uh, who we have sold and who has come into the team one last time just so you guys have the oversight of what has been happening we obviously brought in Fofana for the max amount we have let go of Parks, Morris, Holden, Pierce, Coin, Herve lots of players have left because we needed that money for wages now second season coming in we're going to use this money that we are going to carry over to find an even better scout and get even better talents in the next season and I'm excited to see if we are actually going to be getting a bunch of great free agents this season around. New season begins with 1.4 million. I'm going to go for the lowest one so we have a chance of winning it. Um, that's going to be my new strategy from now on. I want to see if any of the players that we actually have have gone up in potential. Specifically, the lads that are quite young and have come into the team now. Um, so, for example, Fofana. Still great potential. That's good. I'm happy with that. Um, anyone else? 20 years old. Nothing on him, which is fine. Some of the Youth Academy players, maybe. Let me take that loan list off of him. Mm, doesn't show any potential. That kind of sucks. Hopefully with a loan, we can get him up upgraded in his ratings. And other than that, we're just looking at a bunch of players that don't seem to have much in them. Acuna is also not showing any potential, so that's okay. What is the budget, though? The budget is 4.1 million. I feel even in League, uh, League 1... I feel like we could possibly bring in a top, top scout and invest our money that way. 1.7 million for the scout. And then we'll go and try and find ourselves some really, really good talents. I think four star, four star is good enough. So we're going to sign him. And we have two scouts now that are actually quite usable. And then the rest of the money we are able to spend and we need to spend it properly. Only how many players above 70? One, two, three players above 70. That definitely needs to change. Oh, finally. I did not know this was a thing. Hey, for those people watching this video as well, if you press R2 here on the main screen, you can actually choose for the training days to be bypassed. I did not know that. There we go. This is nice. I didn't. I, if this was in FIFA 21, I feel so stupid right now. But I'm really happy that we have this in here because I'm pretty sure even if it was in 21, a lot of people didn't know. Just a quick heads up. FIFA 22, free agents in season two are the best I've ever seen in any FIFA so far. And the fact that they actually have real faces and stuff, dope. EA have done a great job on that sense, giving all these players an actual face. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. But lads, take a look at these free agents right here. We have a couple of Moroccan really good ones. This one here looks very good. Pelegri is actually a talented player here in the free agent at the moment. Golan looking solid. Maybe Ibrahimovic is regen. I'm not too sure if he's ended his career, but if he has, this could be Ibra's regen. Um, Hermida we have here. Then we have Da Costa, who just looks unbelievable for the midfield. Lopez, the Brazilian, with insane athleticism and unbelievable moves here. Uh, unbelievable stats here as well. Uh, then we have Bustos for CDM, Budani, another Moroccan that we found, Novikov, Garcia, Chermak, who is the best centre-back I've ever found in the free agents, uh, 18 years old, 73 to 83 in his rating. And yeah, we're going to sign a bunch of these up. I'll show you guys which ones they're going to be. I am just so impressed with the fact that we have found these players in season two. So happy about it as well. This is going to make career mode in general, going to make it amazing. Even this guy, Acosta, look at him. Five star week for three star skill moves. This guy's insane. Real player, by the way. Now the players have been signed. This is the next day on which we are recording this, by the way. But here we are, guys. We have, oh my God. <laughs> First of all, Hernandez, right back. Cuadrados Regen, 75 rated. 
Chermak, a centre-back coming into our team. Taking over with a 75 rating as well. I didn't sign all free agents because it would have been way too much. But I did sign some of the best ones I could find. Oyeda coming in at 6 foot 5. 18 years old Spanish. Get in, son. We have Da Costa coming in into the midfield. Replacing Marin, the free agent that we signed the season before. We have Ibra's regen taking over up top alongside Fofana. And we also have Lopez coming in to help Da Costa with the defensive side of things. Lopez looking very, very good. I think for this to happen, we actually have to go 4-4-2 holding and then switch Da Costa to a right center or center mid in general. So that way, Lopez is a CDM. Da Costa is a center midfielder. The stats on these guys are unreal. I can't believe the free agent system has changed this much, this much in FIFA 22, or I just got hella lucky. Now, Ibra's regen is looking amazing in terms of pace, which you don't really expect from him. Only 17 years old. Lopez comes in at the age of 19 with some of the most well-rounded stats we have seen. Da Costa looks solid as a midfielder with a good weak foot and great passing on him. Uh, Chermak with incredible defending and physicality. Uh, we have Lees here, who we could replace in the future for sure. Hernandez Cuadrado's regen coming in with the five-star skill moves. Beautiful to see that. Did we have anything else? Did I, did I forget about anyone? I mean, Wade uh, probably should be at least on the bench. He's quality. We do have a bunch of really good players now dropping down to the bench. That is only going to strengthen the quality of the team overall. And we will now move forward to the rest of the season. I'm not going to be making any more signings. I think we have made enough for now. And uh, we're going to trust this team as it is. And hopefully smash it out in League One. Since we have been promoted, I'm excited about it. We have uh, a great team that is definitely able to compete here. Maybe even challenge for promotion. That would be a dream come true. But the season begins now. Well, lads, halfway through the season and here we are. We have had some amazing additions into the team, of course. I've only just realized that I've brought in too many free agents. So next season, I will hold myself back from buying too many free agents. Just a little heads up for you guys. Uh, I know it can be a little bit too overwhelming if you get too many in. So just a little heads up. Next season, I will not be getting a single one just to balance it out. Um, but yeah, we are here with Sheffield FC in the round three of the Papa John's trophy. Not really what we are interested in. We're interested in this second position. Championship, we're coming. Championship football is on the horizon. Five losses, four draws and 18 wins for the team. Let's see who has been scoring. I would assume it's Blom. It is probably Blom, isn't it? Has he been scoring all the goals? Yes, 18 and four for him. Wall is getting more goals in off the bench then for Fana, that is not ideal. Dumbia down the left-hand side is performing well. Parsons is still doing all right. Extended contracts with both of those guys. Costa has done well in midfield. Hernandez, the right back, is doing all right. Uh, Marin is still getting his playtime. Lopez has three goals, five assists from CDM. Happy with that. And Wade is getting some playtime off the bench so far. Now, one thing I need to maybe show you guys is this. Let's go into this. You can see I have loaned out Ferraro. I have sold Adams this season for 760k. And then the rest, you guys can tell, are the free agents transfers. So at the moment, championship football on the horizon with no free agents to be allowed to sign next season. We have to rely heavily on our money. We have 3.1 million and I have one specific player to bring in for the wings. We're going to go in for Kvadvo Ba. He is the one. 1.7 mil. I offered 2 million earlier on. I was actually spot on by the looks of things. But I wanted to scout him to make sure we don't offer too much. So we're going to go in this time with an offer of 1.7 mil and a sell-on clause. See if they're interested. They'll probably ask for a little bit more. And the deal has gone through. Exactly his market value. Beautiful. Ba joins into the team to play down the wings. New squad, Collins, center back, 64 rated, bang, 65 rated. Beautiful. Hey, mate, we're bringing him up. Clifford, 67 rated, 90 to 94 potential. Join the team, son. Collins, you can join as well. Two incredible talents coming through the Youth Academy to become the backups. And you know what, Wall? You know what, Wall? Listen to me. You're taking away playtime from Fofana. You're taking away playtime now from these youngsters that have just come in. See ya. I just did that. I just did that. Don't care. 
for the future of the club. May 2023. Here we are, lads, and we are looking at an 80-rated Blom, at an 80-rated Lopez, Ojeda, 78, Hernandez, plus 7 growth. Bar has gone up to a 70. Da Costa is looking incredible. Zupan, the youngster from the Youth Academy with no potential, apparently, gone up to a 71. We have let go of both the wingers that we had before, Parsons and also uh, Dumbia. Both of them are going to be leaving the squad. One of them has left. The other one is yet to leave next season. I accepted the deal for him. Now, let's take a look into Sheffield FC's top scorers. Blom, 25 and 7. Fofana, 18 and 2, finally getting the playtime. Marin, off the bench, 12 and 9. Incredible. Dumbia, again, is going to be sold. Da Costa, good performance from him. And then we have a couple of people with really high assist counts. Lopez, Da Costa, Blom, uh, Lam, Marin, all above 7. Really nice to see. Uh, clean sheets wise, how did the goalkeeper do? Ojeda got himself 15 clean sheets in 57 games. Got himself a plus four. Who has grown the most this year? Plus seven is absolutely massive. Is anyone that beats that? No way, right? Nah, plus seven is the highest that we have coming in for Hernandez and Blum. Exciting prospect and showing great potential. I have a feeling that might just go up next season. Again, we're not going to sign any free agents next year. We're going to have to use our budgets to improve this team. And hopefully we'll have a decent budget to deal with. But in the league we have gotten promotion we are going up to the championship as expected team has run through this league and done the right thing all the goals scored decent defending but not the best we have conceded 52 goals which is the same amount as blackpool that needs to improve for sure our defense especially uh the left back and the center back or the left center back i should say need to go up in their stats those are going to be some positions that we definitely have to focus on as soon as possible and move from there season three let's get it on sheffield let's see what you can do in the championship season three begins with uh you know what i'm gonna try and go for the big one even though we probably won't make it but still we're gonna go for it look at sheffield fc and its budget in the championship it's only 8.6 million but the chat has just come in and reminded me of something very very important and that was the fact that we need to go ahead and change our stadium. Now that we are in the championship, we do need a bigger stadium and we will do exactly that. Which one does it need to be? This one had 9,000 people. I'm going to say we need at least 20,000. Let's say this one. This one looks pretty much perfect. 22,000. And then once we do get into the Premier League and maybe establish us ourselves for at least one season, we go ahead and upgrade even more. All right, let's do it like that. We now have 22,000 people. BT Local Business Stadium is growing and expanding. Let me look into the potentials of the lads. Showing great potential. Lopez, contract expiring soon. Got to be careful with these types of players. Exciting prospect Lopez has now become. Potential to be special on Blom. Let's go. Hey, I love to see that. Ibra's regen is on fire. Exciting prospect on Oyeda. Great potential on uh, our Portuguese midfield beast with 39 million in the release clause. Got to be careful with that. Cermak is fine. Great potential on Fofana. We have Lam whose contract is expiring, which is fine, but I want to sell him on. So we're going to extend it so we get a little bit more money from it. Wade, this is a big one now. I mean, he has had such a good season for us initially. After that, he barely got any playtime. So I'm assuming dynamic potential has basically kicked him down now. That's not ideal. And then we have Lise here as well, who probably will be leaving the squad in this transfer window as well. Then we have Ba, who has just come in towards the end of the last season with the uh, great potential. Zupan not showing anything is a bit of an L. So maybe down the line, we might have to get rid of him. And then Lang and all these lads have to go. Clifford went down from potential to be special to exciting prospect. But I think that's still fine. We can deal with that. And then the rest of the team, any other insane players around? Not that I know of. All good, though. We're moving into season four with a strong squad. I guess we got to make it happen. A new transfer is coming into the squad. We have just signed Edozi from Manchester City. We tried to sign him last season. Didn't manage to pull it off. It is technically a downgrade because Zupan is 71 rated, but Zupan doesn't have any potential in him. So he's going to be leaving the squad and Edozi is taken over at that left wing position for us from this point on and into the future. So Zupan... 
no potential, sadly. Edozi comes in there and he's taking over that left wing spot. And that way we will maybe get some cash into the club. We can sell a couple of players for sure in this transfer window. Uh, Dumbia is going to leave once we move forward a day. And in general, the center back position is my biggest issue. So we're going to be having to spend on that in just a second once we have sold a couple of players. But Edozi comes in with good ratings. I didn't save there. That's cool. Uh, let me just show you guys real quick his stats. The Manchester City talent is going to be a very, very good talent that a lot of people are going to be using in FIFA 22, I think. He's very cheap and has good potential. 82 pace, 73 dribbling. Low on the defensive and physical side, uh, especially physicality is more important there. It is a bit low, but obviously he's quite young, uh, only 20 years old, and we're now in season three. So I'm assuming he starts off at 17 and uh, he will be a great addition to the squad down the line for sure. Scout reports are finally coming in. Who are these guys? So, wow, Balde, 4.1 mil, 72 rated. That is already my favorite. Miguel is going to be more expensive. Udoji or Udogi um, is coming in with the 70 rating. Oppegaard, 69. Chalanolu, 70. Alda, 71. Lukanet, 74. Kadia 40, 73. Hickey, 74. We're definitely signing Balde. After scouting all these guys, he seems like the perfect deal. Balde is going to be coming in for around 4.8 million. That is absolutely nothing. And I will be paying uh the amount that he's worth i do i even bother negotiating i guess i do because his contract is expiring maybe they will sell him for less than that 4.8 was the amount right so let's try four mil see what they say they want 4.1 perfect there we go we have saved ourselves some money good thing i checked that out a second ago good stuff <laughs> that's a great left back coming into the squad boys we found our center back boys 7.6 the offer is coming in and the offer has been accepted. We got Dardai into the team. Let's go. After searching for a center back for quite some time, now we found our player. Dardai is the one. A new center back has entered the scene. But before I show his stats, I should probably show you the players that we have sold and brought in. So Dardai for 7.6 mil. Balde for 4.1. Edozi for 3.25. No free agents this season. Like I said, last season we bought too many. Wade for 2.7 mil. Lam for 2.2. Zupan for 2.2, Marina has gone for 2, Lise has left the team, and Acuna has gone on loan finally after accepting 60,000 deals for him. Anyways, here comes the new centre-back, Dardai with the 74 rating. That is a good boost to the team. Very happy with that one. And I have way too many goalkeepers in this team, that is for sure. And too many centre-backs as well. What the hell? We have way too many centre-backs. I need some midfielders to come in into the squad. Maybe through the Youth Academy, we'll see. But for now... That is our team for the season. Hopefully, it's going to be a good one. I might need to sell one more player to make sure that we actually have enough money for wages because right now, it's looking very, very bad. January 2024 and our team is currently doing a good job. We were top four a second ago when I checked and we're top five now. So we are within the playoff range, but we're only four points off guaranteed promotion. Norwich and Brentford are ahead of us in those areas. And as the team gets better, we might get closer to that and take a beautiful look at this, boys. We have Blom at the 83, Fofana 78, finally doing well. Ba with the 76, Da Costa has gone up to a 79, soon hopefully 80. Lopez has grown nicely. Exciting prospect, obviously. Edozi came in and grew a lot. That's a plus five. I think he came in at a 69. Balde came in at 72. Grew by plus four. Dardai has done well for himself. Chermak is stuck, sadly, this season. But maybe next season, dynamic potential will finally kick in. If not, we'll have to get rid of him. Hernandez, though, is the outstanding name in the team right now. The right back is on fire. Cuadrado's regen is doing bits for us. And then Ojeda in the goal is doing all right. The bench... Clifford is the one and only one that really stands out. 67 to 71 growth. He's probably playing a lot of games, I would assume, because he's getting subbed in every single match. So let's see. Blom, 17. Fofana, 12. Clifford, 5 goals. Good for him. He's getting playtime. 28 matches played. He needs to be above 6.5, so he keeps at least his exciting prospect, I think. That's how it works. But happy with the two up front. They are carrying the team for now. 
And maybe they might just carry us into playoffs or maybe even guaranteed promotion to the Premier League, which ideally I would like to avoid because we're not ready yet. But then again, moving into the Premier League would give us a huge budget. And with that, we could do some business. And next season, we're allowed to sign free agents again. And that means I can maybe stack up the bench with actually decent players. So we'll see how that goes. I'm open for anything, but ideally stay in the championship for one more season, get the players to grow even more for one more year, and then step into the Premier League with maybe players that are all around 80. That'd be ideal. Mate, we might actually get promotion, you know? We might actually pull this off because I'm seeing a lot of dubs. This is actually happening. No freaking way is this happening. Nah. Are we getting Premier League football? We might actually get Premier League football. We have we have gotten the second position. Sheffield FC. Oldest club in world football. Google it. <laughs> 95 points. Oh, boys. I didn't think that would happen, man. 95 points. Brentford, 97. West Brom lost that spot. Norwich is on 89. Burnley's on 79. Swansea on 79. Hopefully, Swansea makes it up. I kind of sympathize with them i don't know why I'm, I'm definitely doing a rebuild on swansea for sure uh but sheffield 95 boys get in let's go this is what we love to see so now let's take a look into growth because i have seen some insane numbers this season hernandez plus three he's the highest rated one blom gotten up to that rating 86 as well gonna grow to a 90 next year and possibly hernandez as well lopez plus five oyeda is with the 85, I'm um, sorry, with the 83, with a plus five. Da Costa is stuck. That's a bit of an issue. Uh, but for now, he's okay. Fofana, great growth this season. He might get to exciting prospect lot next year. This guy surprised me the most. Balde, plus seven growth this year. Ba, plus eight. <laughs> this is incredible. Dardai with the plus four. Chanmak is stuck on the 77. Edozi, plus eight one more time. And then to finish it off, Clifford, with the plus four and in terms of goals we're looking at blom for 33 and six in a championship and fofana with the 22 and 2 7.2 rating 7.4 rating 6.9 6.8 6.6 clifford might remain a an exciting prospect edozi just so close to seven that would have definitely bumped him up a little bit more i think uh but in general i am very happy with the outcome of the season i think Maybe, just maybe, we might survive in the Premier League. We might survive. Definitely not getting into the top half, though, with this team. I'd be surprised. I mean, we do have a few outliers that are really, really good, but the the, the base of this team is still too low. We got to raise that a little bit more to be able to, to be successful in the Prem, that's for sure. But let's get into the new season. Let's do season four. Assist leader. Ooh, Felipe Lopez. I love that. That's a new thing. Beautifully done, EA. Good stuff. So let's see if the boys have kept their potential. 6.7 million going into season four for us. And here are the boys. Show me. Exciting prospect still on Hernandez. I would have expected a little bit more by now. Uh, but that can take him to up to like 89 maybe this season. Blom, potential to be special. Come on. Exciting prospect on Lopez. Oyeda, exciting as well. Balde is an exciting one now. That's beautiful to see. Da Costa will hopefully continue growing this season. Ba is only showing great potential despite that insane growth last year. Exciting prospect on Fofana. He just saved himself. He is going to stay in the club because I was thinking maybe we let him go if he doesn't become an exciting prospect, but he has done it. Uh, Dardai, we don't see it anymore. Edozi, exciting. Get in, mate. That's huge. He was only showing great potential. And then for the rest of the team, Clifford has kept his potential. Let's go, buddy. This is going to be a good season. And in terms of budget, 48 million. But more than spending the money myself, I am more excited about free agents to fill up the bench because our bench for the Premier League is awful. I desperately need better midfielders 100% now. It needs to happen. And fullbacks as well. The rest is okay. Oh, hold on. <laughs> what? <laughs> hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell is going on? An 85 rated free agent this is mattens regen and he just came in with the same rating as mattens actually no mattens starts off with an 84 his regen is better than himself <laughs> what is this okay guys i can't believe this has just happened but we have just signed that mattens regen but forget about that 
let me just quickly show you how insane free agents are. Since this is the first rebuild that I'm doing on FIFA 22, this is obviously the perfect opportunity to kind of see what's new, how the system has changed and somewhat and all that stuff. Free agents are filled with insane players each season. I feel like every single regen, instead of going into the leagues, is actually going into the free agents now. And that changes a lot. Let me show you what we have just signed. Here, here, here are the players that we have signed. We have signed a center forward here, 85 rated. So he can take over a Fofana's position if he wants to. <laughs> he can do that. Uh, then we have Fofana obviously going onto the bench. Clifford can be loaned out now since he's an exciting prospect. We want to keep him that way. Deschamps is coming in. Irgil is coming in as a goalkeeper into our team. He, he demanded crucial first team player, even though he's way lower rated than Oyeda. That's interesting. Uh, then we have found Castiello, who is mind-blowing. A centre-back that probably is the regen of Bonucci or Chiellini. I don't know which one it is, but he starts off with an 82 rating. So that is incredible. And then we have also brought in Diakate for the midfield, because obviously we don't have that many great midfield options right now. So Diakate comes in there. And then the team is just looking absolutely stacked. And that still leaves us with a decent amount to spend. Maybe we'll put Clifford onto the bench here and we'll have two strikers on the bench. And that way we might have a little bit more success because we do have two strikers up front and we could possibly sub these guys in for them. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly change uh, Legrand to an actual striker rather than him being a center forward. Uh, does he get a, a plus one there or something like that? He gets a minus two. Uh, I guess I'll still change it though because I do want him to uh, play in that striking position because then I think these guys are going to be subbed in more for his spot. Uh, I don't want this guy to be subbed in. So for now, we are looking at some massive boosts to the team. Free agents, highly recommend to anyone. Check them out in FIFA. Um, they are amazing. Halfway through the season and I can't believe what I'm seeing. We are actually fourth. I don't think we're going to end up there. Liverpool, Wolves, and Arsenal are way too close. There's no way, right? We get Champions League football in the first season of Prem. There's absolutely no way. Sheffield FC on fire right now, though. And uh, we have 14 million left due to dealing with contractual situations the entire time. We have been losing money all the time. So it's good that I've kept that money. But looking at the starting lineup, we're seeing Blom soon to reach the 90. We see Hernandez very close to that as well. Ojeda or Oyeda, whatever. He's up to an 86. Lopez is up to an 87. Edozi has grown a lot this season up to an 82. Ba has gone up as well. Da Costa is the only one where I'm like, nah, come on, man. You can do better than that. Or maybe even Dardai, but we'll see how that goes. Balde continuously growing very well. Fofana on the bench is doing all right. Uh, Sarmiento on that 78. I think he came in at a 75, so that's quite good to see. Diakate, 74 up to a 76, I think. Uh, Chermak is stuck. Deschamps got a plus two this season as well. And the rest of the bench or the reserves is looking all right. By the way, Blom and Legrand look like they could be brothers. Anyways, it is an incredible, incredible half a season so far. And the top scorer is, of course, Blom. Ibra's regen has 13 goals and two assists. Legrand has gotten himself 18-3. Ba is on 13 goal contributions. Da Costa might just have the season that finally pushes him up to higher ratings. 7-8. In 28 games is unreal. I wonder if he can keep that up. I'd be very surprised if he can pull that off. Uh, Clifford on 20 appearances with four goals. Fofana on four. Okay, I'm happy with this. I just wonder, can they actually make it to Champions League football? That'd be unreal. Top scorers, Patson Daka. What a beast. Me, 2025. The season has come to an end. We have beaten Manchester United, lost against Everton. I do wonder though, are we in there? We're actually fourth. No freaking way. We got Champions League football. Sheffield FC, oldest club in world football, is climbing up the ranks. Look at that. Absolute beauty. And in terms of the ratings, boys, take a closer look at this. We have a 90 rated Blom, right? Ibra is right there with the 90 rating. Beautiful to see. Legrand now a striker next to him, 87 rated. Ba on the 83, Da Costa 81. There's a couple of players that definitely will be replaced next season. Lopez with the 88 looking amazing. Edozi has grown nicely. Balde looks outstanding. Dardai has grown. Okay, he was like an 81, 82. Has gone up a little bit. 
Castiello is talented, so I'm, I'm going to put my faith into him. Hernandez has been stuck on that 88 for a little bit now. Ojeda with the 88. Fofana, 83. And then Clifford here as well. Sarmiento has done well. Diacate has done well. Very happy with the outcome of this season. Let's see who was the top performer. Was it the Belgian lads or was it Ibra's region? It was Ibra's region. 22 goals, 3 assists, 25 goal contributions. And Legrand has gotten himself 23. So pretty much very close to each other. Both on a 7.1 average rating this season. And that Costa had an amazing year. 11 goals, 12 assists. You better get that potential boost for next season or I'm gone, mate. This is your last chance. Then we have Quadro Bar coming up with the 83. With 11 and 5. How did Edozi do? Ooh, only 4 goals and 2 assists despite growing plus 7 this season. Insane growth once again. Castiello only a plus 1 though. Hopefully, hopefully dynamic potential will kick in for some of these players so that we can see them go up even more. Balde with the plus 7 just like Edozi. The left-hand side has grown the most in our team. Champions League football. Here we come. Who was the top scorer? It was Hyung Min Son. We do not, we do not have a single player in there, which is a bit upsetting. But Da Costa nearly got the most clean, uh, most assists there. That is uh, quite close. And then we have Blom at number ten for the top scorer list. Clean sheets. Let's see. We're probably not in there. Oh, we are in there. Ojeda has gotten the most clean sheets. Congratulations. One of the best goalkeepers in the Prem already. New season begins with 9.8 million in the budget. Let's see what else we got here, boys. We got our players ready to roll and the potentials if we do get to see them. Exciting prospect on Hernandez, even though he has already exceeded it. He's already an 89. Ojeda is the same. Lopez is not showing anything because he's too old now. Exciting prospect on Balde. Hopefully, we can get him to that 90 rating this season. Same for this man. And then Edozi. I do see him going up to at least an 88 this season, hopefully. Castiello only showing great potential, which means he's technically kind of stuck where he is. He might grow up one or two this season, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, is Dardai growing? Let's see. Is he growing? 90 weeks. Okay, so Dardai will have to be replaced this season. Castiello is going to grow, but I wonder how much. So Dardai is the number one to be replaced. I wonder how the situation is with this man. Okay, 13 weeks. That's okay. I can deal with that. Fofana, I wonder, is he going to go up? I don't think he will. Oh, he actually will. Fofana will continue on growing, which is good. And then Eagle has gone up to an 82 away from our home. Now, Da Costa, how's the situation with you, mate? Only one week to get up to an 82. And after that, we'll see if we're going to keep a hold of him. But he is one of the lowest rated players in the squad. So we got to be careful with that. The budget is 105 million. Let's freaking go. Dardai, you're out immediately. Da Costa, you know what? Da Costa, no matter how much you're going to grow this season, you might be out as well. We could use him in a deal. So we'll see how this goes. Big changes to the team. Incoming transfers. It's time. Mr. Araujo, former Barcelona player, now at Wolfsburg. We're going to go ahead and try and sign him for the team. He is injury prone, though, which is not ideal. But he's 26. He has some experience to bring into the squad. And uh, we, could use, we could use Dardai in the deal to bring down the price a little bit at least. So let's hope this is going to work out. Let's go ahead into this deal and let's get this done. It is going to be center backs, Dardai, 31 mil, plus 20 mil, sell on clause, bang, bang. Let's make it happen. And there we go. Araujo joins our team. Let's go. Money is no issue anymore. 85 rated. 50 million in value. Mateusz Nunes is the one that we're going to go for from Brasu for the center midfield position to replace our 81 rated midfielder. That's a plus four upgrade. It's going to cost us a lot of money, though. Let's see if we can make this work. Nunes, welcome to the team, my friend. 85 rated just went from 50 mil to 54 mil. mil. Everyone we sign gets better. That's what I want to see. Diakate, you still remain a backup, buddy. As Nunes takes over that center midfield position with some of the most balanced stats you can find for that position. Not the best defender, but still good enough. And he's definitely going to be the one moving forward. 84 shooting. I expect at least 10 goals from him this season. At least. Okay, we got to see that. Or let's see. Let's say at least 15 goal contributions. That's the way to go. Now, I want to see. Can he grow this year? Because 85 is his max potential, actually. 18 weeks on okay form. He'll definitely go up. Maybe we can get him up to an 87 and then 
kickstart his growth even more for the next years. He's 26 now. Yes, that's not the youngest, but still, he has some room to grow. All good. January 2026. Here we are, boys. And I have already seen the team is on fire. We are second right now, right behind Liverpool, but not too far away from them. We used to be first in the last month. We have lost that position just now. But Sheffield FC is on fire. And the reason for that is, look at this team. 93, 89, 90, 90, 90, 89, 87. We're getting there. Castiello is ruining it. So next season, we will have to bring in a partner for Araujo. Uh, that is going to be a very high-rated centre-back for sure. And then we could probably challenge for the Champions League title. I don't know if we are there right now. Where are we in the Champions League at the moment? Let me just quickly check that out. Uh, we hopefully did make it through the group stages. I'm hoping we did. If we didn't, I'd be very upset. We're there against AS Monaco in the group stages. We smacked Villarreal, Wolfsburg and Celtic. Mm, not really the toughest group. So far, no good opponents yet. AS Monaco should be an easy one. But after that, we're looking at potential of Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich, Man City, Real Madrid, Atletico, Juve, Manchester United... It's going to be different gravy once we get there. But in the league, we're doing well. And the lads, in terms of goal scorers, we got Blom with the 19. And I told you, Nunes, 15 and 7 already. Halfway through the season. What a monster. I told you he'd be great, man. He's so freaking good already. He has 22 goal contributions in 30 games as a center midfielder. What a monster he is. Legrand coming in with the 13 and 7. You should be ashamed. A center midfielder is outdoing you. Edozi and Ba just not really getting involved as much. So, uh, especially Ba, we have to look into next season, uh, possibly to exchange him for a different player. Because, yeah, as you can tell here, he's probably going to go up by one more by one more to an 86. Then we got to cash in on him. Edozi, I still have high hopes in to continue growing to even higher ratings. Ooh, he might be stuck as well, you know. But 87 is okay. 87 is okay. I can deal with that. 85, not so much. Castiello and Ba, I'm looking at you two. Be careful. You got to perform. Well, guys, you see Atletico in the Champions League final at the end of Season 5. And the reason for that is because Sheffield FC lost on penalties. 4-3 in the quarterfinals. We would have come up against Manchester City, who we have been beating in the league. So I would have assumed we would have gone through and played against Messi and the boys in the final. But it wasn't to be. In the league, we dropped down massively down to the fourth position. Someone must have gotten injured. How the hell did we fall down here? Is our goalkeeper injured? Is that the reason why? I don't know what happened, but our season fell apart there for a little bit. And I don't like that. Now, in terms of rating, though, we can see that Balde has gone up to that 90 as well now, which is kind of nice. Uh, Legrand hasn't reached it yet, but next season he's pretty much guaranteed to get there. Edozi is going to be staying for sure. Ba needs to go. And Castiello needs to go. Unless Ba gets more in the next season in terms of upgrades. If he can continue growing, I'll keep him. Because 87, 87 and above is like the sweet spot. I'd like to keep that if that's possible. But Castiello 100% is going to be leaving next season. And maybe our entire budget is going to be spent on a new centre-back. But I am quite upset about the fact that we have fallen down to that fourth position from the second spot that we were in. Now, we have gotten kicked out on penalties in the Champions League. Season 5 wasn't necessarily a great one, but hopefully we'll learn from this. And Nunes should be striker. 26 goals, 9 assists for the man. 24 and 8 for Legrand. And then 32 in 10 for Blom. Nunes is my man of the season for 100%. Bar with the 6.9, he could go up. He could go up. We'll see how that goes, though. Ba has another chance next season. Plus three growth this year. Maybe another plus two next season would be just about perfect. But we will go into season six, hoping that this is the one. All right. Season six, high hopes, new center back. Let's get it. Season six, here we are. Now the question is about Ba. Is he going to grow or do we have to replace him as well? Because the rest of the team I'm pretty happy with. Let me just check Edozi real quick. Let's see how long. Oops, sorry. Hey, let's go. Edozi's going to go up to at least an 89 this season. How about Ba? Ba, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't disappoint, man. Don't you dare disappoint. Yes! All right, Ba stays. Only one player to be replaced. And he just turned into an exciting prospect. But he has bad form. Okay, now I'm conflicted. 
We are going to go for Joe Gomez, 29 years old by now, playing for Barcelona. Let's rescue him for that shambles of a club right now. Just joking. I used to love Barca, but right now they're an absolute shambles. Let's be real. Uh, we got to go ahead and get Joe Gomez into the squad. Experience to come into the team. Not necessarily going for an extreme youngster at this point. We want him to lead the line at the back to replace our 85 rated center back. I think this is the right choice. Let's get him. Well, Joe Gomez, here he is. He comes in and Irgil comes back as a backup keeper as well. That's going to be quite useful. We got to give him a new contract, turning him into a um, rotational or important player instead of crucial for sure. But Joe Gomez, 88 pace, 89 defending, 83 physicality. That boosts up our team massively. Ba is going to go up as well very soon to an 87. So it's going to be a great season with a bunch of players possibly reaching the 90. Nunes, I'm fully expecting to grow at least to an 88 with his insane performances lately. There's nothing else I would expect from him. Now that we have established ourselves in the Champions League, I think it's time to upgrade the stadium. BT Local Business Stadium is not that local anymore. We're going to go for 22,000 to about 50,000 viewers. We're going to go with the... Actually, you know what? 42,000. I think this is a nice step up. 42,000 from uh, 22,000 or whatever it was that we just went up from. That is our new stadium from this point on. A lot more people want to see this team play. So let's make it bigger. Halfway through the year. Here we are. 2027. Can this be the big one? Champions League football. Did we did we win? Galatasaray, only a draw. What? You Okay, you have a big win. Oh, okay, we should be through. We should be through into the next round of the Champions League. Only second again. 46 points on Sheffield. My, 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 my. Come on, boys, man. We got to do better than that. But maybe this time, if the goalkeeper gets injured, we have a good backup. So that should be an okay situation because I feel like towards the end of last season, we had an injury for the goalkeeper and we only had like a 60 rated goalkeeper there. Um, so now that we have a good backup, we should have a better year for sure. Uh, Sheffield doing well in that sense. Not necessarily winning the Premier League title yet, but I would love to see it. Blom, 95, by the way. Ibra's regen is on fire, bro. And then we are looking at some decent growth for everyone above 90, really. Got a plus one. Balde gone up to a 91 as well. Lopez, 91 himself. Legro 91. Edozi should reach 90 this season. I would love to see that. Araujo with a plus one. Gomez is stuck, but he will get to an 89, I think, towards the end of the season. Nunes, due to his amazing performance last year, is continuously growing. Probably the next guy to reach that 90. Might even get there before Edozi if he pushes hard enough. And then Ba got to that 87 and secured himself another contract. Fofana is up to the 86 despite being on the bench. That's quite nice to see because a lot of times in FIFA 21, when you had players on the bench and they didn't play as much, um, they tend to be really, really upset. But I think since we are using a two striker formation and only have like an actual good striker on the bench, Fofana is getting enough play time to continuously grow. Blum, 24 goals in 29. Legrand, 12. Fofana, there we go. Nine goals. So you can see he's getting enough play time. So he's kind of happy. Edozi's doing all right. Nunes, not there yet. Four and four, but 7.0 rating. So if he keeps it up, it's going to be all right. And Clifford has got himself six goal contributions as well. Halfway through the year. That is an all right situation to be in. Now, I want to see us win the Premier League. And I want to see us win the Champions League because this team is good enough. This is where things get spicy normally. Here is Atletico Madrid again. Not again, man. Every single rebuild I do, it's always Atletico. I'm going to lose the next match 2-1 again. And then we're going to lose on penalties. I swear to God. I... What do I have to do? What do I have to do in this game to beat Atletico Madrid? How are they capable of pulling this off every single year, man? Who do you have? Who is your player? Who is scoring the goals? Joao Felix, Richarlison, Leon Goretzka, Tielemans, Pogba. What, what is that team? How did you get these players from? Lukaku is not even playing. It's actually going to go into season seven for us to win the Champions League title. If we ever going to going to be pulling it off. I am losing hope. Atletico Madrid each time in the freaking quarterfinals, man. Every single time. They don't disappoint. They're always there to annoy me. And they are beating us one more time. I really hope someone else beats them next time. I, I'm just sick and tired of matching up against them. May 2027. Nearly a fully 90 plus rated team. Now able to win the Premier League title at least. 47 manager rating. You have to be kidding. There's no way you're going to fire me 
when I just won you the Premier League. There's absolutely no way you're going to do that to me. Yeah, go ahead. Fire me. Fire me. Anyways, this is it. We are looking at nearly a team that is nearly all 90s. We're just missing one, two, three, four players. Seven players are 90 plus, man. Even my bench, Fofana, 87, 82, 81. Come on, 85. Please, man. Please. I might have to buy Joao Felix from Atletico Madrid. You know what? I might have to do it. Legrand, you're going to be gone. And it's going to be Joao Felix taking over. We're going to make Atletico Madrid weaker to beat them. Maybe Joao Felix is the key to win the Champions League. Next season, here we come. Actually, sorry. I forgot one thing. Uh, stats, real quick. Let's show you guys who has done well. 46 goals for Blom. 8 assists. The man has gotten 56... No, 54 goal contributions in 56 games. And we couldn't win the Champions League. I feel bad for him. Nunes had a great second half, though. Season 7 begins, and me and my chat have a sinister plan. And the plan is to go ahead and spend all of our money on either getting Oblak away from Atletico or also taking away Joao Felix. I think the goalkeeper has more, an effect, more of an effect on simulations. So I am going to go in and I'm going to take away some of their best players immediately. I hope Oblak is old. I hope he's so old that he's cheap. Yes, 24 mil. I'm buying him right now. Right now, I'm getting him into my team. Give me Oblak. Approach to buy. Aha, you wish I would negotiate. Oblak comes in and then I'm buying Joao as well. And I will win the Champions League with two Atletico players. Not in my starting lineup, but on my freaking bench, bro. On my bench. Let's go. 25 mil. Here, you can have all my money. Give, give, it, give him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for selling your 93 rated goalkeeper for 24 million. That's it. We've done it. Joao Felix signed for 160 million. Oblak signed for 25 million. And with that, we have officially destroyed Atletico Madrid. And we should never see them in a Champions League quarterfinal ever again. Joao goes onto the bench. Oblak goes onto the bench as well. But I think the game might play Oblak on simulations. For me personally, Ojeda is the guy. But uh, we move into a new season now with two massive signings coming in and two that are going to destroy Atletico. I really, really desperately hope that when we go into seasons towards the end and look at the other leagues, that we see Atletico Madrid in the 12th position. That's what I want to see, all right? But here goes the season. I got to be careful with not getting fired as well, by the way. But yeah, we have uh, gone ahead and signed certain players. I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. We have to win the cup. Got to be careful with that. And we have to get this one done as well. That way we will keep our job at least. All right, guys, you won't believe this. We're here now. All right, we're here now. And I got to tell you, it's been an interesting road to get to January here. We're first in the league, which is great. Good, good success. But after having troubles with Atletico... All of a sudden, this Champions League season, the game decided, you know what? Your team sucks. It's all 90 rated, but you're going to lose against Celtic. You're going to lose against Genk. Not once, but twice. We still made it through to the Champions League next stages, though. Luckily, extremely luckily. Let me show you guys here. We're going to be up against AS Monaco again. If I get Atletico again, let me see. Is Atletico in here? Is Atletico in here? They're here. Please match me up against Atletico. Anyways, we got second place due to beating Sevilla ourselves. We got that second place secured despite having a worse goal difference. Got extremely lucky there. But I do not understand how this team is not able to beat Genk and Celtic. I think that's just outrageous. Um, 19 goals, 16 goals, 8, 6, 6 there as well. Joao Felix... Getting play time, but doing nothing. Uh, so good for him. In terms of um, games played, we do actually... Uh, do we have... Which goalkeeper do we have playing the most games? That's something I wonder about. Is it Oblak? Oh, both of them are playing the games. Why is it mixing it up like that? That's weird. Anyways, it's going okay, but I could lose my mind any moment. So the boys better step it up and stop losing stupid games. Who does Barca have? They have Haaland, Kulusevski, Fati, Barilla, De Jong. Oh my God. Oh, they're going to smack me around, aren't they? I know it already. Haaland, stop. Haaland. Oh, yes. Come on. 2-0 win in the semifinals of Champions League football. Is this the season? Is this finally the season? 
2028. First rebuild of the year with the oldest club in football. Can we finally get into the Champions League final so I can play it myself? I beg you, please let it happen. Are we going to be going into the Champions League final? Yes or no? Haaland and the boys, can they still hold us back? I hope they don't. I hope they don't. Come on. Yes! We're through on aggregates. Champions League final. Here I come. That is exactly what we wanted to see, boys. Come on, put me into the final. Who's my opponent? Paris Saint-Germain is our opponent in the Champions League final, guys. Sheffield FC. It's Messi, Mbappe, Neymar up against us. I would assume who is injured? Who is injured for our team? Someone is out. Someone is out. Someone on the bench, I'm assuming. Okay. We have Mbappe, no Neymar, no Messi. Doku, De La Fuente, Sumare, Bisuma, Racic. It's a good squad. But hey, man, I'm here to win it. So let's start off by simulating because I want to see if there is still the blacked out trophy in FIFA 22. So here it goes. Starting it off. Obviously, I'll be jumping in. Um, but I want to see if we still have that blacked out trophy. Oh, Joao Felix is playing instead of Legrand. Okay, I just saw it now. Come on. Don't be bottling this now. Good save by Ojeda. Good pass. Blom is going to try it. Red timed. Ooh, nearly scored. Nearly scored on a red timed finish. Dun, 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 dun. Doku, is he? No way he just played that pass. That has to be offside. Bro, I thought Doku just shot. I thought he just shot, brother. What is Mbappe doing? Is he okay? <laughs> Blom sees the run down the wing. We got Edozi. Edozi up against his opponent there. He's struggling with a little bit of strength, but it's okay. We move it. Blom, green timed. Donnarumma, mistake. We can't get there. Bro, what the hell is Donnarumma doing? Joao, Atletico player in the squad now. I need that run from Bar. <sighs> Joao, we got to be passing that better than that, mate. It's going to be Lopez trying his luck on a green timed. Oh my God. How the hell did he even hit the top of the net? How did that even happen? Hold on a second. Oh, he hit the crossbar. Oh no, they're playing short. This is bad. This is bad. I can't deal with short corners, man. He is too open. No, 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 no. Get it away. Get it away. Get it away. Okay. Okay. We're fine. We're fine. Oh, Joao got it back. Green timed. Ooh, Donnarumma has to make that save. Otherwise, it goes in. 69 minutes. We're going to make some changes. Uh, yellow card coming in for Araujo there. Don't care. Joao Felix comes out. Um... Sarmiento? No. Diacate? No. Ah, do I give Clifford a chance? Nah. It's just going to be Fofana coming in. Actually, you know what? Sarmiento has to come in for Edozi. He's nearly dead. And Clifford might have to come on down the right. Ba is looking very tired as well. I'm not happy with these changes, but I guess that's what we're doing right now. Yikes. Please take the ball away from him. Yes, let's go, Nunes. Nunes, you monster. Come on, make that run for me. That's the run. Clifford. The Youth Academy Beast. Is he going to be the one to get it done? Clifford. Yes. Clifford. Champions League final. Sheffield FC have their hero in a Youth Academy player getting it done in a Champions League. I didn't believe in him when I subbed him on. I didn't think he could get it done. It's Nunes carrying the ball forward. And Clifford with the left-footed finish past Donnarumma. Yes, mate. Beautiful. He doesn't even have a number on his back. <laughs> he doesn't have a number on his back. <laughs> Yay. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? He doesn't have a number in the Champions League final. <laughs> oh my God. This game. Oh, you'd love to see it. Clifford's on fire. Your defense is terrified. For fun, us on fire. Blom. Bang it! Oh, I love Blommies. Oh no, Mateus was his long shot, wasn't it? Mateus goes for the crossbar. These long shots are just so fun to use. Tickets to Long Shot City. We're nearly given out. Sarmiento brings it back in. Blom, Fofana. I see Clifford. Clifford making a run. Go on, make that run for me down the right. Yes, we have numbers. Blom, go on. Hey, ref, he ran into the back of me. 90 plus one. The game is about to be done. Can we lift the title? Yes, we can. We can. Champions League. We have done it. 
We have done it, boys. We are going to be lifting the Champions League trophy. We have taken Atletico apart. They couldn't get this far. Joao Felix and Oblak. We had to bring them in to be able to live through this moment. The first rebuild of FIFA 22 turned out to be a very, very entertaining one for me to record. And it is not the blacked out trophy. Now I'm sad. Now I'm sad. Hey, it still looks good though. Still looks good. We're going to lift that one up. And that, my friends, is the end of the first rebuild of FIFA 22. Thank you guys so much for watching. I enjoyed myself a lot recording this live on stream. There's going to be a lot more of these types of videos coming up. So make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. If you made it this far into the video, that means you definitely enjoyed it. Have a great day, guys. Take care and peace.